Dear friends, worldwide, things continue to move in the right direction, that is, in our direction. Uh, the sick insanity is now forced to expose itself, and not just itself, but also its puppets, and even the puppet masters are now becoming visible. The bad news is that we're seeing all kinds of conflicts all over the world, for example, in Bolivia. I think that one is a false flag operation to keep the government in power. But there's another one in Kenya, which I think is real. That's where people are really rising up against what they do not consider their government anymore. But the really good news of this week is that Julian Assange is now a free man. Even though he had to bow to the last remnants of power that the other side has and had to plead guilty on, es on espionage uh, charges, um, his attorneys immediately clarified that, um, that the uh, uh, law, the Espionage Act in itself, violates the free speech amendment of the United States Constitution. After all, what Julian Assange did is he uh, exposed war crimes. But the important thing that is he is uh, free now and the uh, alleged crime that he allegedly committed is that of exposing war crimes and other crimes against humanity. In our view, the most important lesson to be learned from Julian Assange's 13-year journey is that the legal system frequently, especially in uh, political cases, um, misuses and bends procedural rules to make sure that the truth does not come out. That means instead of granting the accused in a criminal proceeding the constitutionally protected right to a fair hearing according to the ancient Roman law guarantee of audiatra et ultra pars, um, for example, by hearing the defense's witnesses and looking at other evidence offered by the defense, procedural rules are frequently misused in order to cover up the truth, the real facts. This happens, for example, by qualifying uh, the uh, defense's witnesses as irrelevant in the uh, procedural abuse of the rules, or uh, discarding the defense's uh, motions as belated, as too late. However, in any legal proceeding, especially in a criminal trial, only one thing matters, and that is justice, a just outcome. And that is why procedural rules must never stand in the way of uncovering the truth, the true facts. No one needs to study law to understand this. It's a matter of common sense. Only if all the facts come to light is it possible for the people who are the ultimate um, arbiter of the facts, for the jurors, to make the right, the just decision. And that is why I never understood why my former co-host in the Corona Investigative Committee, after we had heard all the witnesses in our model grand jury proceeding, never made good on her promise to allow our viewers to vote on whether this is enough evidence to indict the putative defendants. Why did she do that? Our team and I want to make absolutely sure that in my criminal proceeding, all facts will come to light and will be considered. We want the ultimate arbiter, the people, that is the international public, uh, to get to know all the facts they need to be, that, that need to be considered for a real judgment. That is why our team and I took a close look at the actions and comments of both the presiding judge in my case and the prosecutor in my case, both of whom we are convinced are being bribed and or coerced by their now visible puppet masters in the intelligence services to do their illegal bidding. I will give an introductory statement and will then continue with a detailed legal analysis of one, the legitimacy of even very strong words, which we haven't even begun to use yet, in a criminal trial on the basis of what is called the battle for justice. Second, my kidnapping from Mexico and the now exposed attempted cover-up of this abduction as a simple legal deportation, which it wasn't. That's a fake. 
Third, the special importance of the defendant's right to uh, a full and fair hearing, which means that um, the defendant, that the accused needs to be heard before an indictment is filed. And fourth, the felony we're talking about as far as the judge and the um, uh, DA is concerned, the felony of um, misinterpreting, bending, breaking the law. Uh, that is a felony. It's not a misdemeanor. Difference between a felony in Germany and a misdemeanor, on the other hand, is a felony carries with it a minimum sentence of imprisonment, of, of a one-year imprisonment. Um, I, by the way, am accused of having committed a misdemeanor. So we're going to um, detail why this is, uh, what they did is the uh, bending, the criminal bending of the law, to reach the desired and or ordered illegal result. Um, in order to make sure that I'm not going to bore anyone, I'm making these statements without any legal mumble jumble, but in plain English, so that anyone will easily understand what I'm talking about. And I will only give brief audio introductions or abstracts that sum summarize the contents of each statement. Anyone who is then interested can look at the written details so as to make sure that uh, everyone can easily check the veracity of what we're saying and what I'm saying in these statements and decide for themselves if our um, if, if, if the accusations against the presiding judge and the prosecutor um, or accusation is the criminal bending of the law, a felony, if this is plausible. In short, it matters much more what the public, in this case even the international public, what the people think and decide on the basis of all the facts than what the systems puppets think or decide.